Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Neat Yug. In this particular video session, we'll be discussing about taxonomy and systematics. You may be wondering why I'm holding this. I want this to explain the entire concept of taxonomy. Imagine you don't have any name. How will you be called then? Imagine if things didn't have a name. If someone calls donkey as tiger or elephant as mouse or Virat Kohli as Ranbir Singh, how do you feel? Imagine you are a researcher and you are working on a plant species and accidentally you discover a medicine for cancer. Now you want to publish your discovery. If you don't know the name of the plant and if someone already given a name to the plant and you are going to use the name which is already given by someone in your article. Suppose if the plant species is new to the world, very new to the world and nobody knows about it and you are going to give a name to the plant by you know by following set of rules that is actually the taxonomy and you give a scientific name and publish the article so that is a taxonomy so what is exactly taxonomy here i just want to write i just i will split this taxonomy into two parts one part is Taxis. One part is taxis. So the meaning of taxis in Greek is arrangement. The other part is the nomus. The nomus in the sense it is laws. Arrangement using set of rules or laws that is actually called as taxonomy and this particular word is derived from Greek word. Okay, so I, I have written some scientist name here actually particularly Augustine Pyramus D. Kandul. He is the one who coined the term taxonomy. And then Carlos Linnaeus, you all know he is the father of taxonomy. Why taxonomy? We are curious to know about different organisms, uh, maybe for research purpose or medicinal purpose, agricultural purpose, biotechnological purpose. We need a taxonomy. Uh, in simple word, a taxonomy is introducing an organism by giving a scientific name for our welfare. See, taxonomy is the branch of biology which deals with identification and nomenclature of all the living organisms and their classification based on similarities and differences. Uh, in my previous session, you know, we have discussed about the total number of living organisms or total number of species present in the earth. That is actually 8.7 million species. This is the total number of species present in this earth. Out of 8.7 million species, only 1.78 million species have been identified and described. That means only 15 percentage, okay, only 15 percentage of these species have been described and given scientific name. That means 85 percentage of the species have yet to be discovered. So this particular work is done by the numerous taxonomists as well as the biologist. Okay, according to, so, so now the, let us learn the four basic elements of taxonomy. It is also called as, you know, the processes of taxonomy. The first one is characterization. Next one is identification. Third one is classification. Fourth one is nomenclature. So let us see what is exactly this characterization is. You have to remember this in order because very important for the competitive examination. So now uh, let us imagine that, you know, I am uh, one of the taxonomies. Okay, so I'm working on one particular organism. I have discovered this or I you know I, I found this organism accidentally. Now I want to classify this and give a particular name to this organism. Let us see how exactly it works. So I'm the taxonomist. Obviously, like you know, I have to follow these rules because these rules are already set by numerous taxonomic taxonomists. I cannot actually follow my own rules. I have to follow these rules. The first rule is characterization. So let us see how exactly characterization goes. So first let me tell you the definition of this. So it is an organism is to be studied is described for all its morphological character. Please remember an organism is to be studied is described for all its morphological characters. So I'm going to write morphological characters. Okay. So this point to be remembered. Okay, so let us see. This is actually a known organism. Okay, I want to you know I you know 
present this organism to the world okay with a new name the scientific name so first step is actually characterization so here i have to look for its morphological character what is exactly morphological character here morphological character in the sense like external appearance okay so let us see its external appearance and you know what i do is like i take a pen and paper and i write down all its morphological character so here uh obviously i don't have paper here i'll write it on the board okay so here i write one of its morphological character okay so it is let us say like 13 feet in length okay even though it's small but okay so then i write okay so it is it's it has got a tail which is 3.3 feet okay then it has got four limbs okay uh, then it has got hairs on its body okay uh, then uh, it has got external ear okay so it has got external ear is there then it has got memory glands okay so these are all the characters like morphological characters i have written here okay so now this is actually called as characterization so like now you see i have listed all the morphological character but in modern taxonomy you need to remember this the people the taxonomist also include anatomy what is anatomy what is there inside this organism that is anatomy okay so that is the internal organ arrangement then you know nowadays dna barcoding is also very common okay so other than that uh, i have to look for its cell structure so i have done with uh, listing all its morphological characters i have written in a book actually i got it so now i have to move to the second step that is called as identification let me tell you the definition of this identification here is the correct description giving a correct description of an organism to know what organism the name is attached so you may not understand this but you know for this to know you know to know which organism we you know almost resembles in characters okay so which this particular organism is very close to one particular organism which is already described in a book that particular book is actually called as dichotomous key so here i'm using a reference book that is one of the taxonomical aid you are going to study in the next classes okay so that taxonomical aid book is the key it is also called a dichotomous key i'll just show you a dichotomous key okay i have prepared this to just to make you understand what is exactly dichotomous key see this particular booklet contains two sentences and it has got numerous pages okay each page contains two uh, sentences and one sentence you could see here backbone is present the other sentence is, sentence is backbone is absent backbone is present so do you think that this particular organism has backbone yes this particular organism has backbone whereas so that means here it is mentioned that go to page number three so here there is a hint it is vertebrata that means this particular organism has a backbone so i have to go to page number three so let us see i'll go to page number three now okay so in the page number three there are two couplets the two sentences are there which are contrasting actually that's what we call it as a dichotomous key okay absence of jaws presence of jaws if the jaw is absent then we have to go to page number nine if jaw is present then we have to go to page number 10 so this particular organism has a jaws okay very well built jaw okay so presence of jaws then i have to go to page number 10 okay, that is gnathostomata that means an organism which has jaws okay so i have to go to page number 10 now okay yes we arrive to the page number 10 base fins or base limbs this particular organism has a limbs uh, not fins so that means we have to go to page number 12 that is tetrapoda so that means this book is making my work simpler right it is taking me to particular destination so i will know that you know which particular organism is closest which is closest to this particular organism in terms of characters that is dichotomous keys okay so 12 page number 12 presence of hairs on the body okay absence of hairs presence of hairs obviously we have already listed it has got hairs actually so go to page number 14 so it is a mammal okay so 14 page number 14 here feeds on other animals feeds on plants obviously this is a carnivorous that means it feeds on other animals so it is actually carnivorous so if it is carnivorous then it is like already given there go to page number 17 so okay i have not written fine so i'll keep this 
so that is actually dichotomous keys that means that particular key has taken me to closest organism that is actually the definition so correct description of the organism to know what organism the name is particularly given so that is actually the thing or attached okay so that is identification so that means we are done with identification next step is actually classification what is classification see classification means classification of the organism into convenient category based on easily observable character so we have already written the easily observable character even we have identified that particular organism so the work is easy from now so you know that i have said like you know there are numerous taxonomists who have already written a lot of things about it and particularly like uh, let me tell you that category here means in taxonomy the category is kingdom phylum okay i'll put the arrow mark okay then class then order okay so then family and find genus and species so this is actually the taxonomic category so this is now actually what we have to do based on the description we, now we have to put this organism into each rank so in taxonomic category these are all individual you know words what you see here is actually the ranks okay it is actually also called as taxon remember this it is also called as taxon or ranks okay kingdom is a rank phylum is a rank kingdom is a taxon phylum is a taxon if i am talking about all the seven category uh, seven uh, individual uh, things uh, like taxon then it is actually called as taxa remember it so this is now taxa uh, now what we have to do is we have to fit or like put the characters into each the taxon okay so we all know that you know this looks like animals okay so you know that you know there are five kingdoms particularly you know that uh, the monera or uh, the mycota plantae animalia fungi all these are kingdom okay so here this particular organism belongs to animalia because it has got animal characters okay so i write animalia okay then what is exactly the phylum of this the phylum it has got a backbone as i said that means actually during its embryonic development it had uh, particularly like uh, the notochord okay so we will put this in chordata okay chordata then what is the class the class particularly it has got memory glands even though it belongs to chordata there are so many different organisms are there which doesn't have the memory glands but it has got memory glands and hairs on the body so that means i'll just write this is mammalia okay then what is exactly the order see this particular organism feeds on other animals so it is actually the carnivores so i will just put this in carnivora carnivora then actually what is the family of this so it looks like a cat okay cat sim it you know its appearance is almost similar to cat so i'll just you know write uh, the cat family that is felidae so the family is felidae then what is exactly the genus see this particular organism looks like cat but it's big in size and it has the capacity to roar so almost like similar to lion or maybe other species okay so that means genus here any organism which can roar particularly comes under felidae that is actually called as the panthera so that means this particular organism belongs to the genus panthera now species this is unknown organism right i don't know what exactly the name of this i have come till the genus that is i know that you know this is almost close to the panthera genus maybe almost close to panthera leo that is actually the lion so almost close okay but i don't know what is exactly that species name that is actually the duty of me that is a duty of a taxonomist to give a particular name so that is in nomenclature now we have to understand what is exactly nomenclature what is nomenclature here so i'm going to give a scientific name to this particular organism because i have done with all these things actually characterization is done identification is done classification is done the final step is nomenclature so i'm thinking what kind of name i can give so here i cannot give a name of my own i have to consult 
ICN that is International Code of Nomenclature. If I am doing research on animal, then I have to consult ICZN, International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. If it is plant, then ICBN that is Botanical Nomenclature. So here I am thinking what kind of name I can give to this organism. Okay, it could be anything. Let us name it as uh, Tigris. Okay. Tigris. So from today onwards, this particular organism's scientific name is Panthera. Tigris. Even if you check it in Google, okay, you are going to get this, or then if you type Panthera Tigris, you are going to get this organism. This is all about taxonomy. So please remember the order of taxonomy. The four basic elements, it is also called as the process of taxonomy. So this should be remembered. Even you have to remember the definition of all. So first one is, we just have to remember one word. That is morphological characters. Other one is correct description. Third one is actually, you know, the classification into convenient category. Last one is scientific name, giving a binomial nomenclature to this particular organ that is all about taxonomy. In our next video session, we are going to discuss about systematics.